Lately, I've been spending a bunch of time drawing pixel art, and it's been a lot of fun. One of the things I've found that I really like about pixel art is that you can create extremely charming images with just a few blocks of color. So when I was thinking about what kind of small video game I want to work on next, I began brainstorming ways that I could turn the satisfaction of arranging pixels to form a simple image into a puzzle game. It occurred to me that pixels are just solid blocks of color, so I thought to myself, which puzzle games use blocks? And of course, it didn't take long for Tetris to come to mind because it's probably the most well-known and beloved game of all time. So that's it. I'm going to combine the gameplay of Tetris with making pixel art and call it Pictris. Let's get started with some paper prototyping. Just like Tetris, the game will use tetrominoes. A tetromino is a geometric shape composed of four squares connected orthogonally, which means they're connected at the edges rather than the corners. These are all the possible one-sided tetrominoes. The player's objective is to arrange differently colored tetrominoes into pixel art. This is what a pixel art image looks like when it's broken down into tetrominoes. The player will have to figure out how to put these tetrominoes back together again. Hello? You want me to come in now? It's my day off. Okay, now that the main objective is laid out, here are some things I still need to figure out. First, will the player be given all the pieces at once, or should the pieces fall one at a time, like in Tetris? I'm thinking that if the player is given all the blocks at once, and there's no vertical stacking mechanic, it will just feel like putting together a regular old puzzle, which isn't very new or exciting. So I'm going to take the Tetris approach of giving the player one piece at a time, and then they have to stack them on top of each other. But how will the player know where the piece should go in the first place? For that, I'll have to provide a picture of the finished image for the player to reference. Now this brings into question whether or not the tetrominoes should fall towards the bottom of the game board or not. But I'm thinking it will be too hard to quickly figure out where the piece should go, so I'm not going to go that route. Also, I'm thinking I want the player's experience to be not too stressful or intense like the original Tetris can get sometimes. So the pieces won't be falling, and in fact, I'll allow the player to move their piece upwards so that if they put a piece in the incorrect position, they can try to fit it somewhere else. Okay, I'm ready to start prototyping the game in Unity. I'm thinking I'll start with a game board that is 8 blocks wide and 8 blocks high, for a total of 64 blocks. Now on to creating the 7 tetromino shapes. Each tetromino will be a game object composed of 4 sprites that are child game objects. And here I'm going to shrink the sprites down a little bit so there will be a border around them. Like this. Now, I'm coding a script that will allow the player to move the tetrominoes. The way I'm handling this is if the player presses down, the tetromino position will move exactly one grid space down in the Y direction. If they press up, it will move one space up in the Y direction, and the same goes for left and right, but those will affect the X position of the piece. For the rotation of the tetrominoes, it's a little tricky because except for the O tetromino, the pieces can't rotate around their exact center and stay lined up with the rest of the grid. I found this chart online that shows how you can solve this rotation problem. To fix this, I just have to move the anchor point of the pieces to a particular spot. Okay, cool. Now the pieces are rotating and staying on the grid. Thank you. 
Next, I need to have some kind of a collision detection so the pieces can't move outside the bounds of the game area. So in the movement script, I made it to where every time the player attempts to move a piece, there's a check to see if it will be out of bounds. If so, the piece is prevented from moving into that position. I'm also keeping track of where previous pieces have been placed, so that those positions cannot be moved into either. Next, I'm going to use the same check for when the player attempts to rotate a piece. Which means that if a piece is right up against a wall or another piece, it won't rotate. Now I'm going to work on coding a piece spawner that will spawn the player's pieces one by one and check to see if the piece is in the correct position. The way I'm handling checking for the correct position is that I'm going to manually build the completed puzzle with all the pieces in the correct positions and use those positions for comparison. I'll also number the pieces so the piece spawner will know which piece from the completed puzzle to spawn next and which piece to compare that spawn piece to. The player won't be able to see this completed puzzle though. What they will see is a shrunken version of the finished puzzle that's floating off to the side of the game board. Let me step you through how a round will go so you can see how it all works together. Okay, so here's the completed puzzle with all the tetrominoes in their correct positions. But, the completed puzzle will be hidden behind the game board, so the player can't see it. They can only see the small copy of the completed puzzle over here. Now, let me move the game board out of the way so you can see the completed puzzle again. This piece in the completed puzzle is tagged as 1, so the piece spawner finds that piece and spawns a copy of it for the player to use. The player's piece is placed above and in front of the game board for the player to move around. I'll just put the game board back in position again to hide the solution. Once the player puts the piece in the correct position, it's locked into place, and the borders around the squares comprising the piece are removed so it looks like a solid tetromino. Then, the piece spawner finds the piece marked as 2 and spawns a copy of it for the player to move. This is repeated until the player has correctly positioned all the pieces and the round is over. Cool, so that's how the game is working so far. After going through it a couple of times, I'm seeing some problems though. The first thing I'm noticing is that when you hold down a key to move a piece, it still moves pretty slowly. I'll have to work on that so it doesn't feel quite so sluggish. The other problem is that sometimes a piece may look like it's in the correct position in rotation, but it's not being recognized as such. Take this yellow piece here for example. Because it's a completely solid yellow piece, it looks the exact same way when rotated 0 degrees as it does when rotated 180 degrees. So it's recognized as a match when it's rotated this way, but not when it's rotated this way. I could set something up to check for this, or I could make sure to never use a completely solid colored piece. I'll have to think on it some more. Okay, so that's all the progress I've made so far on my little game called Pictress. I'm gonna keep working on it and I'll let you know how it goes. See you next time. Are you Emerald? Are you making a Tetris video game spin-off? Congratulations, you're being sued.